Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Live with Sandra V and Kenny V. <laughs> uh, we are back. Sorry we missed last week. I had a little bit of vertigo, and I was supposed to finish smocking uh, the pillow that we will be assembling tonight. <clears throat> and every time that I laid my head down, um, I got a little dizzy. On so, the pillow. <laughs> yeah, on the pillow. <laughs> so, welcome. And t uh, say hello to us as you come in tonight so that we know that you're here. And as always, please share it out with others so that they can join us. I've got my iPad over here, and, and we have uh, Kenny V. Hey, Kim. Kim's out there watching. And let's see if we can tap that. Uh, uh, it's giving me a little uh, video. She'll start soon. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. I, we're live, but we're not showing that we're live over here on uh, my iPad. Because it's waiting for the, the live to go over there. Uh, the time to cut down. No, we're live, so we should be live. So, I don't know. It's at 7 o'clock, probably. Maybe. The video should start soon. So, I don't know. Let me see if we can refresh it over here. Don't That's know. Not pushing me out of the picture. Sorry about that. I uh, don't know if what's going on. Let's give it a minute. Oh, I can see that people are showing up. So if you could see us, just let it, who knows, right? Oh, some days. Uh, so, okay. Um, oh, whatever. Technology. Okay, so Kim, that's all that matters is that I can see that you're saying hello. Okay, good. I don't know why, but I'm not showing up on my iPad. So uh, I don't know how we're going to have to deal with um, the comments tonight. And so Sharon's here. Hello, Sharon. We can see the little thing here. I wish Facebook had, we didn't have all these issues. But anyway, so we are going to be talking about this pillow again. And, uh, you know, two weeks ago we began smocking it. And tonight we are, I'm going to show you how you can uh, assemble. You can hear us both. <laughs> Let me play with this real quick. And uh, it would be nice so we can... Um, so that we could see the comments tonight. That is an important feature. So give me one second. And uh, hold on one second. I can see things. It's the same okay. thing, honey. Every time you hush the button. I know. I knew that. I know that. And uh, well, Nothing's changed. Okay. I don't know if it's. Um, I think it's just so. Uh, thank you for your patience. Yeah, well, no, it's not there. Okay, let's see if we can reset this so that we can see. It says we're going to join. Thank you for your patience out there. Okay. Same thing. Well, I don't know what's going on. I think it's waiting until 7 o'clock. I don't think so. Don't get so rambunctious here. Oh, my gosh. This is what we live with here. Live Sandra V. <laughs> the lack of patience, plenty yeah. of patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. It, 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 it's pretty bad when you can't even. I'm glad we have a five minute warm up because, you know, technology. We can't even see our own um, live streaming here. There we go. I told you I'd figure it out. Yeah, I, I figured you might. Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. Yes, okay, I, that's what I had to do. So, hello, Kim. And hello, uh, you had to go back and come out. Me, me too. It, it, um, Sharon didn't do her homework. Uh-oh. Okay, says the show starts in one minute. Might show up then. Okay. Well, I, I think that um, hopefully it's not messing up because I had to go out and come back in too. So, I hope that uh, people don't have issues with tonight's broadcast. But that's what it's that's all right. about. So when that goes zero, then I hit number two. That's right. I'm teaching Ken how to um, be my uh, cameraman, to be my bill. <laughs> or in the absence of Sandra Live, it could be uh, Kenny Live. Oh, let him do this thing on his own. Okay, are you watching? Two, one, hit that button. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Live with Sandra V and Kenny V. It's always great to have all of you here, and as all of you know already, that we are going to be dis uh, continue discussing uh, and learning how to make this 
a vintage uh, lattice smocked pillow. And we were here two weeks ago, like I said, and uh, I had vertigo. I, I still have a little bit of it. And so when I was trying to finish my project for tonight, I could not do it because I felt car sick every time I put my head down to smock. Uh, so and She hadn't been riding with me, so it's not my fault. <laughs> so welcome everyone and if you wouldn't mind share this out so others can join in this is episode number 39 can you believe that and it's always wonderful to have all of you here and uh well, linda did her homework yeah linda did her homework <laughs> i know you, linda. yeah she did she had it out there and it was i was beautiful oh, okay. i think linda did you do yours in a, a satin or silk because it, it, it was beautiful and thank you anybody else out there do your homework just let us know. As you all know, uh, we try to be here every Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And if you're watching the replay, um, thank you for joining in. I know a lot of folks can't come in on Tuesday nights if you watch the replay and you, you leave me messages. Um, and I appreciate that. And I, I try to answer all of them. But again, we just welcome all of you. And as you know, that our, our goal here at Live with Sandra Bean. <laughs> um, we like to educate and inspire and promote others within the industry. And again, um, we, ho we hope that we do that. And if you ever want to have see me do a project that I haven't thought of yet, please let me know and we'll see if we can't accommodate. And, but anyway, I am going to get going on this because I always Great. run out of time. So I want to say hello to everyone first and then I'm going to get started. I hate running out of time, but I, I do that quite frequently. So um, let me look real quick. Like I said, we don't get all the comments up here anymore, so I have to look away for one second. And I, hello, Kim and Sharon. And you didn't do your homework, Sharon. <laughs> and uh, Jeanette Blankenship. Hello, Jeanette. I'm so glad that you've joined in tonight. You need to come by and visit me sometime. And is it, I hope I didn't rain. I hope I pronounced your rain. Um, Rainy, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, I'm sorry, but welcome. And Linda, she did her homework. I hope all of you were able to see that. And hello, Amy. My niece, Amy. It's always good to have you here, too. I miss you. So, okay. Um, I am going to do a really quick review of what we covered um, two weeks ago. And as you all know, um, I explained the difference between uh, Canadian smocking and English smocking. And English smocking, oh, I didn't realize how well, yeah, there's here, but this not smocking. Uh, English smocking, you usually see it on little, uh, on children's clothing. It's all the little tiny pleats that go across their garments. And you can do a geometric smocking, or you can do what we call picture smocking. And I love, uh, I do love doing that uh, English smocking as well. But what you're seeing usually on home decor is called Canadian smocking. And this here happens to be the uh, lattice um, pattern. And there's a, a lot of different patterns out there. And there's a few more that, I, that have cropped up, some new ones. And I want to try them. And if I do, I will definitely um, show you. Okay. And so, like I said, real quick, um, I'm going to go, go over what you need to create this pillow. And you will start with a piece of fabric that is, um, you will cut it up 54 inches wide and you will cut it at at least 54 or 55 inches across. And usually fabric usually comes that um, about 55, 54 inches. So you can do it straight across your uh, width of your fabric. Now, a lot of you had some great questions when we were here uh, two, two weeks ago, and so I wanted to answer some of that. Hopefully, I will answer them tonight. And one of the big questions was, how much, um, what percent does the smocking take up on, the, on this pillow? And for this particular design, I measured it, and we started at 54 inches, and I think uh, from end to end, it's ending about 36 inches smocked. So if I did my calculations right, that is uh, about a 35% shrinkage. Okay, uh, Linda, uh, you like I said, you did your uh, you did your homework. Uh, did, how much did yours shrink up did, when you started with 55 
and how much did yours shrink up? And anybody else out there too, if you uh, if you smocked, um, did if you finished it up, how much did yours shrink up? It'd be interesting to know because I wonder if it's different for different fabrics as well. This that I'm working on now is a is a heavier weight um, velvet. It's like an upholstered velvet. And while we're at it, we'll talk about the different fabrics. I love using velvets. I just think that they're they're beautiful, but you can certainly use silks. Um, I do want to try a linen, and you can use uh, my my aunt, my aunt, uh, when she smocked, she always used um, satins, and they were beautiful, and that's what was popular way back in the 60s, so, and 50s too. Okay, uh, let's see. So the pillow that um, this pillow here that I've smocked up, I've used that same formula. The 24 inches wide with the 55, 54 inches long. And it made a pillow, because um, that was another question, how large was this pillow when it was finished? I'm going to answer that. It finished at about, um, let me see if I got, it finished at about, uh, whoop, lost my tape measure. It was about 13, uh, 13 to 14 inches wide, and if I run my tape around the pillow, um, it finished up about, let me see if you can see this, about um, 44 inches wide, or 44 inches round. Okay. And I, I used uh, a poly, um, a poly insert that I created, I had to make, because this is really, um, this is really uh, has a lot of um, oomph to it, if you will. And so I didn't think that I could find the uh, inner to go in here. So I made my own, and I'm going to show you all how you could do that and what, what the uh, measurements uh, were that I used. Okay? All right. So now that you have your fabric... And let me see if I can put my pillow to the side here. Now that you have your fabric that you have cut, and if you can see here, I've got a lot of things in the way. Um, again, this is my, I, I've cut this piece of lining and I gritted a, did a grid on it, and I thought maybe it would be uh, make more sense to all of you who might want to um, follow along and make your own. So my fabric, like I said, 24 inches wide. And the gridding, or the pattern, if you will, will run up the, uh, the fabric and you will grid this all the way up to 54 or 55 inches. Okay? How many of you got that far out there? I'm going to stop a second to see how many of you got that far. And I'm going to say hello to everyone. And, uh, hey, David. <laughs> My brother, David, love you. I'm going to come in. And... Uh, Jane, hello Jane, and let us know where you're from too. I'd like to know where everyone's from. David's from Greenville, I think. Yeah, we know who David is, and Bonnie, hey Bonnie, how are you? This is Canada. Bonnie, we're going to Canada in a couple weeks, but I don't think we're going to be in your neck of the woods. And Donna, hello Donna. So, oh Kim, Kim, you finished yours? You started yours? That's great. I want to see pictures, by the way. Okay, so... What I have here is the the fabric, 24 inches wide, and when I started to grid, I come in six and a half inches from each side, okay? And I've taken my quilter's guide, let me pull it out, and I've used this uh, quilter's grid and I use this quilter's grid for a lot of things, but it really um, comes in handy for this. And I've started at the very bottom of my fabric. Like I said, I came in six and a half inches from each side, and I'm going to start one inch up on the bottom using my guide. And I am going to create, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Okay, is that better? You can see this. Okay. And I 
have created, and I've numbered them, 11 rows running horizontally, and as many rows as I can get running up the 54 inches. And these rows are one inch squares, and you need to be as accurate as possible. And so I've taken my quilter's guide and I've laid it across the, the very bottom after I came in six and a half on each side. I know I've repeated that a number of times. Um, and then it came up. And I, for this piece of fabric, um, I, I've used a ball pin so that you can see it. But whenever you create yours, make sure that um, you use a, uh, like a fabric marker that does not disappear. And you do not want to use a chalk because as you're, as you're smocking, the chalk will start to rub away or can smear. Um, and honestly, I, um, I will tell you um, on the piece that I'm going to be uh, making my pillow, finishing the pillow off tonight, I used uh, an ink pen on the back of here. But you can certainly use a pencil. And you can see that the ink... Uh, the ink did not come through at all. Um, I would certainly, if when in doubt, go ahead and test your fabric um, on the side and let, let maybe let the ink set a little bit because I don't want to tell you to use ink and then you use ink on a piece of $100 a yard fabric and it bleeds through and you come back and, um, you know, uh, let me know about it. <laughs> okay. But, uh, and I actually, on this piece here, I actually gritted this out probably about, I don't know, uh, two years ago. Um, and it just kind of sat around in a, in, a, in a bag until I decided to teach you all how to do it. And as, and as you can see, it has not, um, you can, let me show you close up. You can see where I have the, the ink mark squares here. And if I turn it over, um, it did not, it did not bleed through. But that's up to you. You might want to just use a pencil. Just to make sure. Okay. Not a purple marker. Not a purple marker. Not those that, that fade. Okay. So I, again, have gone along and I've carefully gritted out one inch going up horizontally. And I have come across going vertically and have created, that's not where that is, and have created my one inch lines all the way down. And as you can see here, like I said a few minutes ago, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 rows. And I, what you will do is you will have um, rows one and two that I'm going to show you how you're going to mark it. And then you're going to skip a, a row. Then you will mark four, five, skip a row, mark seven, eight, skip a row, and mark row 10 and 11. And so you can start with row one, and this is gonna be your seam, the first first row will be like your seam allowance. So come up one block and leave it blank. Come up to the third block, and you will mark from the bottom of your left hand corner, and you will run it up to the top right hand corner. Skip, do the same thing, skip, do the same thing all the way up and you'll come to row two and you're going to you're going to skip the uh, first row again that's your, we'll call that your seam allowance row and you'll start in your bottom right hand corner and you draw the diagonals from right to the top left skip and the same thing and run this way skip the row and then you re repeat the same pattern in four five and again seven eight and nine ten okay Okay, and then once you have uh, gridded your entire piece of fabric, you're ready to smock. And you can see here this one, once you get going, you think this looks easy, and it is, but it can do something to your eyes sometimes. So you can see how I've started this, and I'm going to go here and skip. Actually, I probably should start here and skip, and you just draw, skip, draw, skip, draw, skip draw okay and I have got going sometimes and if um, messed up and then when you mess up I just kind of <laughs> I just kind of squiggle it out 
Okay, there you go. So this piece is pretty much all um, gridded out. And like I said, it's just a sample piece. And I thought it would be easier for you all to see it this way. And then we're going to go over the stitches one more time for any of you who missed it. How many of you were not here a couple weeks ago? And this is your first time? Let me know. Okay. So now, and let me see if I can get a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing if you're here for the first time. I think my brother's wreaking havoc out there. We just, you can, you can ignore the guy called David if you want to. <laughs> okay, there we go. Got a little bit closer. Okay, and you can use, um, you can use just some regular thread. I have like four strands here. You can use like a, um, a buttonhole twist if you like to. Uh, or, and you can certainly... Uh, match your thread to your fabric. I'm using red so that you can see it. And again, this is just a piece of lining. And to start, you're going to pick up the bottom uh, right-hand corner in row two. And you want to make sure that this is anchored. And there, you're going to see why you have these diagonals here. Once you start smocking, you can kind of lose where you're supposed to go to next. And so I would always recommend um, marking your fabric. Some people will go in and they'll use a different color marker for their, for their diagonals. I find that one color is fine. And then you're going to go in the direction of that diagonal. You're going to go into that, that corner. And you're going to just pull those two pieces, those two corners together, and then you're going to go back to that first corner and go back to that second corner. And you want to make sure that you anchor this. So you're going to stitch this a couple of times and knot it as you go. Okay, so do that a, a couple of times. Make sure it's anchored. And then you're going to travel. Just like we're going to travel. Bonnie, I wish we could see you <laughs> uh, when we go up there. We're going to be in, uh, we're actually going to be in uh, Vancouver and uh, where, uh, Victoria. Victoria. Yeah, that's where we're going to be. So I don't think we're close by you. Okay. Where is she at? Maybe she's, in, uh, she's in New Brunswick. Oh, that's beautiful up there. I need to go there. I know. Maybe we will one day. Okay. So we're going to travel. So you're going to you're going to travel along the bottom edge of the block in uh, row one. And this this is just a traveling thread. You don't have to pull that tight. Yeah, I figured it might be a long way from you, Bonnie. And, and Linda, too. Linda, we're going to be about three hours away from you. I looked it up because I thought I would come see you. And so you want to anchor this stitch. And then you're, now you're going to come up to the next corner. And when you come up to that corner, you're going to, again, you're going to follow your diagonal line. You're going to pick up that four corners. And you're going to come back to the bottom left corner. And you're going to pull that tight. I can't talk and stitch at the same time. <laughs> okay. And as you can see there, I'm just, again, I needed to secure this. Well, it's hard for me to see. It's at a little bit of a distance from my eyes. So, Kim, you said you, you smocked one? I didn't see it. Y'all need to show it to me. Is this better than two weeks ago? Can you all see this and understand what we're doing here? I actually have like 20-20 vision up close. 
uh, but I can't bring this up to my eyes and smile. Okay. okay, so you've secured it. Now you're going to do another traveling stitch over to the uh, right hand corner, and you need to anchor that. And you're anchoring this because the, the real important stitch is actually from the two diagonals pulling it together. And so if you need to, you can always go back and you can clip these if something gets in the way or it's pulling too tight. You can clip the traveling threads, but you can't clip them if you have not anchored them properly. because You do not want these to come apart. I, hear, I can hear the pop and the know, the know that some of you are coming in. I'll say hello to you in a minute. Okay, and then again, you, now you're going to do the same thing. You're going to start to repeat what you've done in the beginning. I'm going to pop those two together. And it looks kind of different on the back compared to the front, doesn't it? Has anybody else mocked a different design? I, I can't wait. There's a flower one out there, and it's so pretty, and it's got a pearl in the center of it, and I really, I really want to do that one. Like I said, I usually smock whenever I'm on a plane or going somewhere because um, I'm sitting still and I don't sit still uh, well and not do anything. So, Okay, and then you're just going to start to repeat. You're going to do your traveling thread. You're going to anchor it. And like I said, to smock one of these pills takes a good th about a good three hours. And then you'll follow the diagonal. And once you do this row, then you're ready to just repeat the same stitches um, let me back this up a little bit. And then you're you're ready to, to repeat the same stitching um, in four and five, row four and five, um, seven, eight, and nine and ten. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? I'm going to stop and see what y'all have been saying. I can hear the, I can hear the popping going on here. Hello, Debbie. How are you? I was just, uh, I went live on Instagram a little while ago, and there was somebody from Scotland, and uh, she said that she couldn't chat with him anymore because she had to go to bed. And I said, yeah, we have a lady from the UK who pops in, and, and uh, sometimes she has to leave early to, to, to uh, say goodnight, too. So, um, and Bonnie, you were here two weeks ago. Um, and yes, I think I already answered your question. It takes this, uh, to smock it, takes about three hours. Putting it together, and you're going to see tonight, and um, we're going to get going here in a few minutes, it doesn't take long at all. And hi, Sherilyn, how are you doing out there? And Debbie, and so Kim, yours was a little bit smaller. Um, when you said it was smaller, were your square smaller, or was your, your uh, what you were smocking, the piece a little bit smaller? And, and Betsy, yes, you uh, used to smock dresses for your daughter years ago. Um, no, uh, Sherilyn, the print, is the printed side the, the front? Um, no, what I'm smocking right here, this is just a piece of lining, and I wanted to show you how it was gridded out whenever I um, showed everyone a couple of weeks ago. I did it on the back of a piece of fabric, and I know it was probably hard to see, so I thought that I would, I would do this, and hopefully this is a little bit more helpful. Okay, smaller fabric piece. Okay, I can't wait to see it. Show it to us, okay? Put it out there on uh, Live with Sandra V, uh, the Facebook page. Okay, so now to put this together, um, we have this mocking piece, and Cheryl and I'll show you the back of it. This is, uh, this is what it looks like um, on the back once it is all smocked, and I'll turn it the way I was smocking this. And so as you're smocking up uh, the fabric, really it's across the fabric, um, but in this case I'm going to call it up because we've gone the 54 inches this way. And this is what it looks like on the back. Um, but of course when you turn it over, um, when you turn it over, uh, this is what you see. And sometimes some of your, your um, some of the, the lattice work, you know, it, you can t uh, take your finger and put it in there um, to straighten it out just a little bit. Like I have one piece down here that wants to be a little bit uh, unruly with me. And, and sometimes it's just giving it a little pull uh, to the right and left. And as I pull it, you can see how it helps it, it pop in. And uh, 
So yes, and Debbie, you said uh, you missed the beginning. Do you always work two vertical rows at a time? That is a very good question. Uh, yes, you do. You will you will work when you're making the design. Um, you you will work. Uh, let me see. Let me go here. This is row uh, one and two, and you will work um, one and two kind of in unison. And then you can complete that whole row. Uh, but what I do sometimes, um, because I want to see the design right away, so I, I might smock maybe 12 inches, you know, of one and two, and then I go I go to rows, because um, you skip row three, I'll go to row four and five, and I'll do about 12 inches, and then I'll go to eight and nine. And what I do is I will, if I still have, you know, thread on my needle, I will, I will work with four different needles and I'll smock so much and then I'll smock a little bit more. But you can certainly do, you know, you definitely have to do the two rows in unison um, at a time. And so, or you can smock the whole two inches or the whole two rows all the way up and go to the next row and go to the next row. But I get, um, I get anxious and so I, I'll leave my needles running. So, okay. And thank you. I do. It, it is. It is so, so pretty. And hey, Robin, uh, glad to have you here tonight. And again, share it out, everyone, um, so others can join in. Okay. So that's what it looks on the front. So now what we need to do is join this. We need to assemble it. Okay. And I'm going to show you what this finished pillow looks. As you can see, let me put it this way get my camera view is just right as you go around is you can see where I have joined this here and it's you can tell that I've joined it right here uh, because this is a little this, this little piece is a little has a little budgie to it okay but other than that it's not it, you've got to almost have to look for it and I probably could take that out and go in there and get it push it up just a little bit more but you can see the seam there Okay, so I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to put right sides together, and I'm going to find my pins, well first I'll pull it back, let me find my pins. Uh, of course I didn't put any pins close by, do you have some pins over there? Mr. Um, There we go. Got some pens. Thank you there, Mr. Kenny B. Yeah. It's good but to have I you here. Help. Yeah, you see, you didn't think you can help. Well, if you were to find one here, I don't know what you would do. I don't either. <laughs> okay. So you can see how this has formed. And I'm just going to take these pieces and I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to add. Um, some little pins to it. I'm just going to kind of fold it in the way that it wants to go. I don't know if you can see that. And sometimes they just they want to pop on you, but just give it a little fold. I'm just going to pin it. And sometimes you just have to give it a little tuck. You have to tell it where it needs to go. <laughs> It's like a child, right? They want to do their own thing, and you say, no, no, no. I thought you were going to say husband. Well, yeah, husband can fall into that category, too. I wonder if I put it on top of this pillow here that you can see it better. Sometimes uh, um, you can see different colored fabric hits the lights. There we go. Is that better? And it changes our lighting color. And so I'm just, just kind of gently putting some little tucks in here. And as I'm putting the tucks, you'll see how it will I try to want to make this edge, make this edge kind of straight. Are all of you having some hot weather where you are? It was like a hundred degrees here yesterday in North Carolina. It wasn't as hot today. Let me go back to this piece here. Might that. So I'm just kind of giving it a little tuck. 
It's like I think we've gone from winter right into a hot summer. But we are supposed to get some rain, they said, which we'll need. Okay. So Linda, Earlham, are you still out there? And uh, have you all seen hers? She posted hers, her piece. Okay. So there you go. There's one side. Now I'm going to turn around and do the opposite end. As long as that stand out. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of pinch it. And give it some pins. Okay, I hope you guys are... Y'all are quiet out there. I really wish that we could have a hear you all in real life. Oh, that's snoring? <laughs> that's snoring. So what have you all been working on out there? I saw uh, that, um, who was it, Robin, you're, if you're still there. I saw you out on uh, Instagram. You are, You have just been a busy bee. And uh, Kim, you're always busy. By the way, Kim, I haven't called you and told you this, but I need to tell you that your live last week was awesome. Um, she had, Kim, many of you know Kim Shagnon with Kim's Upholstery. And she does a fanab, fabulous job. She's also an instructor. And she had this woman called Kristen, um, was it Nichols? Please put, uh, put that in there because um, I might have got her last name incorrect. And she, what an artist that she is. She was doing these, made these uh, stamps so that she could stamp this fabric. Uh, she paints. This woman is, is incredible. It, that was such a great, um, it, was, it was such a great episode. And if you all missed it, then you should go to Kim's Upholstery uh, Facebook page and watch that uh, last episode you should watch all of them but go back to last week because it was it was it was phenomenal to see what this woman does so yeah <laughs> yes Kristen uh, Nichols Nicholas and Nichols Nicholas there you go and um, it's hard for me to see it at distance here sorry and uh, it, was, it was fabulous and Kim, uh, she uh, had made a slip cover, or you upholstered a chair with some of the fabric that she's created. And it was just incredible. Anyway. And hello, Kathy. Let me say hello to everyone real quick. Um, hello. Let's see. We've got uh, Donna Scott. Hello. It's okay, Donna. Glad to have you here. Yeah, she is very talented. That I got the biggest kick. I couldn't take my eyes off what y'all were doing. You actually make that you made. They made these stamps, and they uh, put paint on them, and they were stamping fabric. And it was it was very intriguing. Um, yes, did you see it too, Cheryl? Then it was really great. And who else did I miss? Did I miss anybody else? And and uh, Kathy's hello, Kathy. And yes, Robin, you said it's been crazy. It's been pretty crazy here too. I think I have two more weeks of crazy and it's going to let up a little bit, but I'm not complaining. So, okay, back to this so we can get this done. Okay, so I've pinned both sides, as you can see. And so now I'm going to go and I am going to um, line up my edges. Let's do this right here. And you can see I didn't I didn't cut off my selvage, but I'll make sure that I sew over it. I'm gonna pin it together. Oh yeah, the tea towels, yes. And she was so funny too. I mean, she was just she just seemed to be such a delightful lady. I thought I want to meet her in person. How many of you follow? Um, uh, cloth studio on Instagram or you know who I don't know his cannot pronounce his last name I'm 
Um, I don't know that many people that can, but he's from Cloth Studio, and he's up in, I believe, Vancouver. And he beautiful, beautiful linens. And his first name is Ravi. Um, I think if you all have listened to Seal de Guillermo's So Much More podcast, she had interviewed him. And I'm telling you all this because, I, like I said, I follow him on Pinterest. And he was showing us some of his beautiful linen. And I didn't realize who it was until I went back and looked at some of his photos. He is so funny. And so I typed in to Instagram, oh, I, I want some of that linen. And then I found out where he was. He's in Vancouver. And then, I found, like I said, I figured out who he was, and he was on Seal's podcast. And so I reached out to him. And so I'm hoping to visit him when we go up to Vancouver in a couple of weeks. And so uh, hopefully, maybe, he, he will do a live with me. I don't know. We'll find out. So I'll keep you all posted. But go follow him on uh, Pinterest and look at his photos because his linens are gorgeous. They're just like to die for. So, Okay, um, as I was yapping away, I went ahead and I pinned my edges together, right sides together. And now I'm going to take them over to the machine and I am going to stitch through all of my pins. And for all of you who do not know, um, if you have your pins at right angles when you stitch, you can go over them. And you shouldn't break a needle. I said that to somebody not too long ago. They had their pins at right angle. Lo and behold, they broke one. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to the machine. And let me push the right button here. I am going to be using my uh, Conso walking foot because I'm going through some thick fabric and. Don't want to use my straight stitch. Okay, so I am just going to make sure that I get past my my seam allowance or my selvage edge, I should say, not my seam. I made that my seam allowance, and I'm using my this is my uh, magnetic guide, and it is huge and it is heavy. It, you can hardly move it. And if I can get it clipped. Okay, you might not be able to hear me real well because I don't have the thing. Oh, sorry. I am back over there, and um, so I have stitched through to make my seam, and I can take all the pins out now. Any question? You, okay, good. You can hear me. All right, good. I forgot that my mic was over here, and I was over there. Uh, as you can see, I stitched twice. Okay, make sure I have all my pins. I know some of you may or may not be pinners, but there are some times that you need to be, and I think this is one case that you might need to be, so you want to get that accurate. And I'm really not real concerned. I guess if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and line up all of those little gathers. I, I didn't. I just kind of stitched it. I don't think I did the first time either. Okay, take all your pins out. And there you have your uh, your seam, your join. Let's see if I can get close up there. OK. 
Okay, there you can see it. All right, so now that I have it in the round, let me see if I can back up a little bit here. Back in the round, and I think I can move this grid out of the way here. Again, I'm sorry, the different color fabric on the table changes the lighting real quick. Like, okay, so now you can see I have this fabric is in the round. Like I said, if you wanted to um, be, you know, go through here and match those up a little bit more, you can do that. Okay. And then I am going to stuff it with the inner that I created for this pillow. And I'm going to show you how um, I have done that. Now this is the inner that I will be using. And as you can see, it's pretty uh, full. And it's with, with poly. And I happened to cut this, um, let's see, whoops, sorry. I made this, um, it's a 19 inch round. And I cut it at 20 inches, and I'm going to show you all how I cut my round. I don't know how many of you, some of you are out there like saying, oh, duh, Sandra, that's easy to do. Uh, but let me show you how I cut my, and one of the little tools that I use whenever you cut a circle. Let me see. Okay. So here's, I, I just use lining for mine. I took a square piece of lining. Of course, you're going to need two, but, you know, working with one. And I know there are some templates out there that you can cut in the round. Of course, I have folded it in half. And you fold in half again. You, have, you come to your corner. And I have put a link, uh, an Amazon link, and I it may or may not be an affiliate link. I'm not real sure if my affiliate link is working, so I have to disclose that. Um, anyway, this is called a um, mm, it's a it's a compass and there's a different name for it but anyway I can't remember it but I did put the link the Amazon link in this um, the beginning of this post for tonight so that if you would like to purchase one you can and you can see that it comes with this uh, little pointy piece here and you can unscrew it and push it back and forth and then it comes with this other blue end that you will you can put it onto a dowel, and then you put a pencil in there. And I think it probably it, when I first uh, purchased it, it came with its own little pencil, and I've used it and have lost it, and so I went ahead and put this big pencil in here tonight. <laughs> oh, I did have a smaller one in there, but it was it was too big and was bulgy. Okay, so all you have to do is with this compass put it onto a dowel, and then you determine. Um, what you want your point to be from this point to your pencil. And so of course if this was a, I was cutting this 20 inches then uh, half of that would be 10 inches. So I would take my ruler you just take your ruler and you can just set it on um, where you want it to go. And here you can see my pencil's at the zero mark. And then my point is at the 10 mark. And then you just put that into the corner of your fabric. And then you just draw your, well you gotta hold it down there. I got a lot of things in my way here. So bear with me. Um, and then you just run this. And it marks and if you wanted to use a fabric marker instead of a pencil, you could certainly do that. Okay. And then you just cut it out. Move this. And then you'll just you would just cut this um, cut this out. And then you would just lay it onto another piece of lining so that you have your top and your bottom. And then just go around and stitch the two together. I'm only going to cut out one because I think you all are smart enough to um, know how to do this. And so you have this circle. And then you can just cut out another one the same way or just lay this down on another piece of fabric 
and cut it out. And then you're going to put the right sides together. You're going to stitch around. And you only have to leave open maybe, oh, I don't know, four inches, five inches. Um, and then turn it and stuff it with um, some polyester batting. Okay. But this is a, a really nifty tool for making circles. And be, I like it because whenever you put it onto a, a dowel, um, you can really make a, you know, a pretty long, a pretty uh, long circle. So it's, it's, it's a great tool to have. Okay. So. Hey, Jaina's there and Julie. Uh, and yes, Debbie, that it, it is a nifty gadget. I love it. It's pretty accurate too. So, okay. So, like I said, and then I have, I have stuffed my inner and like you said, it's it's pretty poofy here, and it will finish. Like I said, it's 19 inches, and I've stuffed it really well. Okay, I'm going back to my pillow. What time is it? Oh, I better hurry up. I don't want to make this part free, but we may have to. And then you're just going to put this inside. Come back up. You're just going to put put it into the inside and kind of go, take it out a slant and put it into the center of your smocking. You may have to turn it over and to get into the center of your smocking. There you go. Okay, because you want this nice and full. And I don't know that you can buy um, an inner that's this fluffy. You might could use a smaller, uh, I mean a larger inner to put inside of here if you want to, if you to buy a ready-made one, you don't want to make your own. And you can see I'm just pulling it a little bit, just turn it your way. I'm just pulling it so I can center the, my inner around my smocking. Like I said, later you can go along and you can uh, tweak some of your smocking. Okay, I think I have it pretty much centered. So I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to begin by just pulling my fabric like this. And you're going to pull those pleats together. I'm going to use my other hand because you want this to go into the center. And you're just going to continue by pulling those pleats together. And it, once you have like two or three pleats, feel free to go ahead and pin them. Because once you get some in your hand, they'll want to slip out. Okay, I'm going to go around. And you're just pulling them together. Because the goal is to pull all this to the center. And you're going to want it to get it as small as you can. You can see after you get so many of them, you almost have to stop and pin. This, like I said, this fabric's a little bit thicker than most. How many of you have had relatives, um, or how many of you have made one of these pillows before, or have seen them and have always wanted one? Hey, Josie, I see Josie joined us tonight. I hope you can come visit me, Josie, when you're in town. Yeah. As I'm doing this, I will tell you all that, um, I hope that this is not part three. I hope we can get this done tonight, and I'll move it along quicker. But um, next week, uh, Veronica Van Gelder will be on the show with me. And I think you all have met her before. She's been here. We talked about outdoor living. And I think, um, I think, as far as I know, unless she doesn't want to do this, that we are going to be making um, some sort of a beach bag because it's that time of year that we're all going, getting ready to go to the beach. And 
but we're going to make a beach bag, I think. That's what I want to make. And making the beach bag, uh, making the, a beach bag, we you're going to say, well, Sandra, you know, you were in the custom drapery. Why are you making a beach bag? Well, when we make this beach bag, you know, we're going to incorporate some of the uh, skills, if you will, some of the techniques that we use in our workroom. And how many of you all were here for the episode whenever I did the turn cord? Good night, Debbie. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. And then, uh, let's see. And Bonnie definitely wants to make one. Yes, I hope you do show it to me. Anyway, going back to what I was saying. And how many of you were here for the turn cord? Do you remember? I don't know if you if, see this. This is a piece of turn cord, and I made that knot. And I don't know if I'll incorporate this into the beach bag, but I might make something a little bit smaller. And that's, that's just a little hint. So you guys will definitely want to come back next week. Because that... Uh, I, I don't. I have a, um, an idea in idea in mind, and so of course I'm going to try to make my own pattern, and we're going to do that. So it's, I want to make it a lot of fun. But again, I want to incorporate a lot of the some of the techniques and some of the things that we use, and uh, we might be using like grommets and things like that. So, okay. Who knows? We'll just. I'm going to let my creative juices flow, and. Uh, if I have time this weekend, I'll make a prototype. I, have, I still have to tell Veronica. She doesn't know yet. <laughs> That'd be fun. Okay. All right. So I am, like I said, just going around here and pulling this together. Now, if I find that this is too thick in here, I might have to go back and trim it. That, but I think it's going to be fine. But the main thing is just you want to get these going in the same direction. And you can see I'm running it in the, in the direction of uh, the pleats, the way they've pleated up. So Kim, did you do yours in a velvet? Is Linda Earlham still there? Because she, I think she did like a, a satin. I also want to remind everyone, I don't know, a couple weeks ago if you were here when Kathy Tucker was here, and she is, and you all know that I'm teaching now, and I uh, have a, another Roman Shade clad class coming up that uh, there's still some openings, and I will be teaching things like cornice boards and balances and panels, but Kathy has a big class coming up in the fall. It's called From uh, Design to Installation, and she's going to it's going to be a great class because she's going to be talking about forms and templates and you get how to deal with uh, clients and you will, make, you will also be making a, uh, a treatment as well so we've got a lot of things coming up here um, that's so what's new okay so there you go there you see I've pulled it together and now I'm taking uh, my needle and thread you can only see my thread here and I am actually, uh, I thought I had a different needle with some stronger thread, but I have just some four strands of thread. Yeah, that those centers can be, um, the centers can be a little tricky too. And I'm looking at this and it seems to be a little bit, this fabric seems to be a little bit thick. Okay. And so what we're going to do is, I'm going to start to go into the very, very tip of my pleats, and I'm just going to start to pick them up. As you can see, it I'm starting. The color is. I think so I can get a little bit closer. Okay. And you're just going to have to pick in, pick up, and you run back and grab a couple pleats you're, you're anchor them as you go of course all my pins are my way and I'm just picking up the tip of that pleat and I might pick up two or three I can hear you all 
I'll leave a message and I'll go back and answer them real quick. See, I've caught these pins, a lot of pins in the way. And again, I'm just picking up the, the tips of these pleats. And then I'll go back and I'll maybe grab two or three of them just to anchor them and pull it. And sometimes, Kim, I, I, I'm wondering if, um, you know, the, sometimes we might have a little bit too much fabric in here, but as you can see, it's going to be pushing down soon. Again, I'm, I'm just picking up those corner of those pleats and giving them a little tug. I've got all my velvet pieces flying everywhere. I'm sorry if my other hand gets in the way. Now it's hiding, so I'm going to go grab it. And see, I'm getting just on the corner. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just getting the tips of those, um, those, the corner of those pleats. I'm just going to give it a good pull, and then go back, and maybe pick up one or two, just to kind of pull and anchor them real good. Sorry if my fingers, my hand gets in the way. I'm going to let some of these pleats go because they're, these pins are sticking me. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna answer your questions in just a few minutes, y'all. I can hear you. If I can hear the... Whenever you all leave a message, it pops. Again, I'm just going to get up to the tip of this and pull it and then go back and pick up a couple of pleats to anchor them together. This is a little fidgety part, but once you get it, you get it. So five minutes. I have five minutes. Okay, I got the five minute warning. We're almost there, y'all. We, we, we'll be covering the main part. If I have to, I'll finish it next week. You all tell me if you want me to. Or I'll finish it offline. But I think, whoops. I know, you know, um, on my first, my, my aqua pillow over here, um, I can't commit to, <laughs> I don't have a button on there. Kim, at least you have a button on yours. I don't have a button on mine. I can't commit to a button. And I actually, I have to tell you, I picked up this little blingy one. I actually have two. And I've been thinking about, you know, putting a blingy one in the center. What do you all think? I can't, I can't commit to a button. I don't know why. I just can't decide if I wanted a fabric. I, you know, I thought maybe I wanted a fabric covered one. But I don't like making fabric colored buttons. Yeah, Sharon, if she was here, uh, she would make my fabric cut and co covered buttons. And she does that, uh, you know, so well with the button machine. But I just, I don't know. I just, it irritates me. So <laughs> I don't do it. Oh my gosh, you love to bling. Okay, so again, I'm just. Up. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, I am picking up here this. I'm rushing here so we get this done. I'm going to add out some of these pins. And you can see how it's starting to come together. Right? And you still have to manipulate some of them. Okay, and so now I'm back at the beginning. And I'm going to pick up these, uh, let's see, first ones here. And I'm going to pull it nice and tight. Okay. Let me get rid of these pins. See what I'm doing. Get rid of my pins. You can pull it nice and tight. And then you, you'll go back and, and manipulate. And once you get the other side in, too, they really start, uh, they start to come together. But I'm going to go around a little bit more on the same ones I've done. 
And I think too, uh, you know, getting up close to the end of these pleats makes a big difference. I know sometimes when we stitch, we want to stitch back, back a little bit, but I think the key to this pillow is stitching on the ends of these pleats. Don't you think? And I'm, see, I'm pulling it now. I'm anchoring it. Okay. Then I'm going to do the other side. And I know we're running out of time. Okay, so you see how nicely that's coming. So again, don't be afraid to go around one more time if you want to. Now the... Um, how do you get the hub in it? How you get the hub? What the... What hub? You squeeze the inner part. Well, yeah, I'll show that. Okay, I'm going to knot this off now. I'm going to knot it off and I'll answer those questions. Hang on, everybody. I'm not ignoring you. If I miss some of your questions, sometimes you guys type so quickly that I, I, I uh, miss it and I answer them later. And sometimes you can go across the other side too, make like a, an X and pick it up to hold it together. see that okay what's a, what's a Milan wait I don't know I'll see well can say Milan I Milan one I'm just waiting until I answer it okay okay hang on give me one second I'm gonna answer y'all all right I'm just kind of tying this knot here and then like I said I'll go back and fix them up okay all right so we have that. Now, what I'm going to do, see, there you go. I will go back, and you can manipulate these, and then get that pin out of there. You don't want something to lay on your pillow and uh, have it stick it, get stuck. And then I will do the same to the other side, okay? And then it will form. Now, you can see how I'm poking. Whenever I get ready for the button, um, you will take your needle Look, wrong button here you're going to take you know your longer needle and you will poke it through poke it through the center I have a knot here and poke it through the center and come out obviously come out the other side Whoop! something happened here okay and come out um, come out the other side all right that's already gathered up uh, and what I do to keep the thread from coming through, <clears throat> I use a piece of welt, cotton welt. I use a, a piece of cotton welt. And you can see that's what I have right there. And as I run it through, I'll leave a tail on one side. I'll run it through, and then I'll put a piece of cotton welt there and double the thread back over it and bring the needle out on the other side. And then I will take it, uh, the thread and I will tie it real tight around this cotton welt, a little piece of welt. And so it will hold it nice and tight and it doesn't, it won't slip through. And then once I know that that's secure then, and I commit to a button, I will then um, go ahead and stitch, be able to stitch my button on. Because sometimes when you're trying to stitch your button on, at the same time you're trying to close up your center, it's it's hard, and it you just you can't get it right and it pops off, and the inner wants to pop back out. So secure your inner first, and then go back and put your button on. Okay? Do we have any questions? I'm sorry I didn't get it completely done. I wasn't sure that I would, um, but I think you all get the uh, the gist of it. And again, I'm just going to go on this side, and I'm going to. Gather it up, and then you, you'll be able to see how this one um, will finish off. Oop, let me get it just right. Okay, let me answer your questions real quick, everyone. Um, and that would be yeah, that will be fun next week. I hope I come up with something really good. Um, yes, yes, you used velvet and you uh, you struggled with the center. Yeah, a three-inch button. Um, thank you, Josie. And hope to see you too. Please let me know that when you're in town. And Sherilyn said, I have one that a lady in Thailand made for me. And it looked just like that. Well, I hope you make one too. You're pretty crafty.
Okay, so you didn't pin your pleats. Yeah, go ahead and pin those pleats. I think it makes a big difference. And you love the bling, Robin. Thank you. Yeah, I think I have to go with the bling, too. Uh, you like the bling, you like the bling. And uh, what about a rose made out of fabric? Oh, that's a really good idea, too. I actually have some feathers that I got, um, that I purchased, I should say, up in New York that I thought about putting in there, but can't commit. Um, yeah, go go over time. Yeah, Milan, Milan. I, oh, she, yeah, she likes the rose idea. I do too. Yeah, redo your center and let's see. That would be really nice. Typo, Ken. Kim said she had a typo there. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that was good. So pretty. Uh, and thank you too, Bonnie, for showing coming. And very pretty. Okay, everyone. There you go. Um, get going on your smocked pillow. And if you make one, please uh, share it with us on uh, the Facebook page because I really, I really do want to see you all um, be able to work on some of the projects that I, I show on here. It just it puts a smile on my face. But uh, okay, good Sharon, get yours going. You went home with a smock piece. You were here last week with me, and you went home with your 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 uh, your fabric ready to smock. So that would be great. Okay, everyone, we better hop out of here. It's six after, and I want to, again, thank everyone for coming, and uh, please uh, join us next week, and we will be making a beach bag, and, and let's see if I can come up with something really neat um, to use this turn cord. So, good night, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>